So the starting lineups, though, very interesting for Northwestern today. Paige Mott in instead of Courtney Shaw, making her first career start as a Wildcat. But then pretty normal with Kayla Rainey, Jillian Brown, Kaylee Walsh, Sydney Wood. Northwestern controlling the opening tip. And for the Wildcats, look for Wood and Walsh to be your two bucket getters. Yeah, Here's Sydney Lee. Wood back into her action, her kind of the self she was two years ago, and here she is with the ball now. Wood trying to penetrate inside. She hits the deck, keeps the ball control, but Valpo comes up with it. That's Sims with the steal. Here's a three from Valpo, nothing there. Wildcats really gonna have to work to push in transition today. Sometimes they struggle to get started on offense, but. The give a go goes Mott with the first basket. But that'll do it. <laughs> and Paige Mott has been, when she gets some action in her, a bright uh, breath of fresh air for Northwestern. Here from the top of the key, off the front rim, Northwestern collects. Here comes Rainey in the Wildcats. Off the Walsh, Walsh with the quick reversal three. Won't we'll go. Like the idea there, Walsh with her usual quick trigger. She's gonna have to work on being on target. I think that one was a little deeper. She didn't really frame up to the basket, basket like she would have liked. Pitts gives it off to Sims. Plenty of time to work with. Penetrating inside, the kick out. Here's Brown. Three seconds, they gotta go do something. Shot clock violation. Wildcat basketball. You could see how Valpo was really trying to work the perimeter there. They're a team that likes to shoot threes. They like to kick it out. But Northwestern, the Blizzard defense, doing a really good job applying the pressure and not allowing them to find a man on the rim. Three-point shooting, a cornerstone of this Valpo offense. Here's Brown from three. Off the mark. Walsh and Sims hitting the deck, but Valpo comes up with it. Now in transition, Brown. Now inside to Sims. Valpo keeping it. Travel, so back-to-back -back turnovers for Valpo and Elliott for the Beacons. The Beacon's not really getting anything going in these early minutes. Yeah, they look a bit rushed, not super comfortable on offense quite yet. Uh, the, tra the turnovers back to back have really been hurting them, but Northwestern really gonna have to start make taking advantage of that and capitalizing on the other end. Rainey with the cross court pass. Now Brown, the give off. Back to Brown. That's a three. Jillian Brown really needed that one. Only five, nothing lead and off the steal. Rainey, the quick thinking, won't go. Here comes Valpo. I like the aggression here from the Northwestern defense. Unfortunately, ends up with a foul for Sydney Wood. I think some of the Wildcat players were hoping there'd be a travel, but instead in Valpo's favor. The three won't fall. Brown collects the rebound. Now Rainey back to Brown. Thought about another three, she'll drive inside instead. Off Valpo. Maya Dunson there for Valparaiso. Putting pressure on Jillian Brown, forcing her, but the Wildcats with a chance to reset. 19 on the shot clock. Now inside. Kick out to Walsh. This is a three, and it will fall. That's, an eight nothing lead. Yeah, that's what Kaylee Welsh wanted, I mean leads this team in three-point percentage in scoring and has made such vast improvements beyond the arc from her first year. Now Ernest with the ball. Thought about the three. Ten on the clock. Ernest. And the first two for the Beacons. Here's Wood. Now inside to Walsh, an easy basket for number 10. Such 
great court vision there from Sydney Wood. I mean, Walsh wide open, cut right to the basket, and showing what she can do both now beyond the arc and down low makes her such a dangerous threat for this Wildcat offense. Absolutely, and Valpo looking to try and calm things down. And Dunson, that's a nice answer for number 32. Finally, Valpo working it around the perimeter like they like to do. And poured it all on. And this is a Valpo team that could be 4-0 if, if a few possessions went the different way. Now here is Saunders. Now Brown. Saunders, eight to shoot. And it's a turnover. Here's Brown pressing. The coast-to-coast -coast trip won't fall. Valpo basketball. A quick three will fall, though. Leah Ernest. And a quick run from Valpo. Yeah, they've really cut into this lead here. A 6-0 run. The jumper won't fall, and Northwestern's gone a little bit cold. Saunders pass, unable to fall. Due to time constraints, we now move ahead in the action. difference between game clock and shot clock. McWilliams inside. The risky pass won't fall. Now here comes Pitts. Back to Pitts. And it will finally go. Johnston breaking the scoring drought for Valparaiso. Johnston, the bench player, the forward, a junior out of Minnesota, making a difference. And Northwestern can hold for the final shot. Now going inside, here's a three from the right corner, and that will go! Morris with a big time three. The heave, great block, and Morris making the three on one end, coming up with a crucial block on the other end. And we welcome you back for the start of the second quarter. Wildcats up Big Alley, 22 to 10. Coming off the big time play for number 42. Yeah, Northwestern really able to make the difference coming out of the media timeout when Valpo is kind of inching closer to maybe tie in the game. And Northwestern picking up a quick foul on Sydney Wood. So Valpo trying to direct some offense. Taka thought about a three. Nice ball movement from the Beacons. Now inside. And they wave off the baskets. Now Northwestern trying to grab the first few points of the quarter. Kick out. Now inside, another score from Morris. Has had the team's last five points. She makes it a 14-point Wildcat lead. Again, this is huge for Anna Morris. She needs to step up offensively this year if Northwestern wants to have a chance, especially getting into Big Ten play. And Tekka. Very interesting to see the lineups on the floor for both teams right now, Sam. I mean, uh, Northwestern going with all three of its juniors at, at once. That's not something you see that often. And then no Courtney Shaw. And then... You know, Saunders wasn't really able to get anything going off the bench, and now she's back on it. So they've got a very interesting lineup, too, on the Beacon side of things. Yeah, you mentioned Allie Saunders. She has been held mum. Not even a shot off for number 11. However, the Beacons cut the lead to 11 off a foul on Anna Morris. So here comes the Wildcats. Williams off to Brown. Brown penetrating. Back to Morris. Now here's inside. The kick out for the three. Northwestern turnover. Here comes Pitts. 
Off to Johnston, back to Pitts. And Pitts at the top of the key. And we'll give it off to Sims. Coming inside. Rejection from Morris. And for Brown, she's had some good touches early on. The cross court pass. I'll call it an offensive foul. A good blocking foul, but yes, you mentioned Allie Saunders and Kaylee Walsh back on the court for their respective teams. Also the leading scorers of their respective teams. The pull up jumper won't fall for Sims. Valpo trying to get creative, maybe shoot from mid-range, but that's not really their specialty, so it doesn't go there. Rainey, that won't fall. McWilliams avoiding the over the back. Tekka gives it off. That will fall. Van Wielden bringing the Beacons back with an eight. Now that's what Valpo wants to do on offense. Kick it out, find someone open, and great court vision from Ali Saunders to push in transition and make that happen quickly and get Van Wielden that look. Yeah, and Ali Saunders being such a young player has to realize and grow upon if your score is not going, find some other ways. The three touches every single bit of the rim, but the offensive rebound will fall for Northwestern. A three, that'll do it. Jillian Brown, the second chance opportunity. And that's why you need him. Jillian Brown couldn't get it to go the first time, gets the exact same look and makes it happen. Saunders, and wielding back to Saunders. Now Tekka, Tekka will try a three. That's not gonna go. Johnston, the off balance shot won't fall for number 41. Northwestern giving up the offensive rebound there is lucky that she was off balance and couldn't make it happen, but if they're gonna get offensive rebounds of themselves, they've gotta make sure that Valpo doesn't. And Rainey, the inside field, the walls, but she is fouled. Crafty roll and bounce for number 10. She looked like she didn't think it would go, and then it did, and you could see the smile on her <laughs> face. That one just was just perfect. Second one won't fall for number 10. 12-point lead for the Wildcats. Ooh, a nice little behind the back from Saunders. Now inside is Sims. She won't find anything. Three-second violation. Three violation. Oh. Credit to the Northwestern defense right now. They are making this Valparaiso team really scramble and making them uncomfortable. They're not able to execute their offensive strategy that they usually do right now because of how Northwestern is playing aggressively on defense. And I think the Wildcats are doing exactly what they want right now. Inside scores, Kaylee Walsh does it again. Saunders trying to find a quick answer. Johnston. Has her pocket picked. Here comes Rainey. The feed. It goes. Rainey to Wood. The easy basket in transition. And Northwestern doubling up Valparaiso. They are no stranger to doubling up opponents. Doubled up Niagara in their game against the Purple Eagles. Here comes Northwestern once again. Walsh inside. Off the glass scores. 10 0 run for the Wildcats. And that puts Kaylee Walsh up to 15 points already today. Johnston. Now Van Wielden off the mark. Saunders with the board. Unable to find it. Second chance opportunities. Not falling for the Beacons. 
She really is. She's averaging 12.6 points per game so far this season. That leads Northwestern and already above that with 15 today, like you mentioned. And Saunders finding Ernest off the baseline inbound. Here comes Sims. Eight to work with. Saunders will launch a three. That will fall. Allie Saunders finding her first basket of the afternoon to stop a 10-0 run. And a triple, nonetheless. Now Walsh. How will Northwestern respond? Mott. Here's Kaylee Rainey. Now Jillian Brown. A shovel like pass, Walsh. The corner three won't fall. Valpo basketball, Dunson with the board. Unlucky there for Northwestern, but I like the idea from uh, Jillian Brown to switch over and kick it out to Kaylee Walsh. And you see that right there. Just the first half, and so like you said, those start to add up and make a difference when Northwestern is able to capitalize on the other end. Rainey. A lot of contact in there. Walsh grabbing the feed from Morris. She is fouled. Valpo not really being able to find any offensive rhythm like their opponent today. Here's Morris from the charity stripe, and that will fall. Anna Morris already with seven points today. She averages just 1.8 this season per game, and so she's really stepped up in this game. Dunson driving inside, kicks out. So accuracy has been great. The inbound pass, that won't fall. Brown, Jillian Brown trying to calm some things down. Her team up big. Walsh will try another triple. That won't go. Rainey with the good board. Morris through a lot of traffic. Back to Brown. That will go. Jillian Brown really making use of space. You could see that Valpo was not in the paint, not ready to defend there. They had kind of spread out, and Jillian Brown with the great look to just cut right to the basket, and it pays off. Inside, Ernest can't find anything. Uh, that shot looked like it may have been doomed from the jump. Now here's Jillian Brown once again. Her offensive production has been key this afternoon. Now Rainey. Here's Wood. Triple team defense from Valpo. Comes up with a big stop. Sims with a big three. Won't go. Wood with the rebound. Brown. Finds Morris. That won't go. Wood with the rebound. Here's Brown. Off the mark. Another opportunity for Northwestern. And they'll go to the line. good with the steals, with the assists, and then also on that all Big Ten defensive team. Obviously missed most of last year due to injury, but back for a fifth year, ready to lead her team. And I think she really stepped up on Tuesday against Niagara. I mean, led all scorers with 19 points and kind of getting back to her junior year self. As Wood sinks both, it's now a 40 to 19 lead. And this is how they dispatched Niagara in their previous game. I identifying what works and what will be the difference maker as Ernest drives, now finds Saunders. Here's a corner three, well off the mark. Valpo staying with it. Here's another corner three, that one's good. That snaps a scoring drought for Valpo finally, and they do it how they like to do it best, find someone on the perimeter, and the Northwestern defense just wasn't ready to go and mark up Brown there. Brown snagging her first basket of the day. Here's Jillian Brown. 
Now finds Lau. Eight on the shot clock. Got to do something, driving inside. Mott, no foul there. Here comes Valpo in transition, Pitts. A nice defensive front from Kaylee Walsh. Northwestern's pressing, Wood. The pull up goes. Sydney Wood can really do it all. I mean, she drives to the basket. She can hit from mid-range. She hasn't really been shooting from mid-range that much early on this season, but that worked perfectly. She knew she had the time and space, and she took advantage. Here's a three from Dunson. Won't go, and if you're Valpo, did they really have to rush that shot? I mean, Sam, down by 20 now. You kind of are trying to get aggressive, but I don't think rushing is the answer here. But Northwestern on defense is forcing them to do so. Here's a three from Brown. That will fall. Beautiful shot from Jillian Brown Saunders into the stands. You have to think there's some sort of injury going on with Courtney Shaw. She was warming up. She is suited up, so probably nothing too serious. But, you know, maybe not going to put her in a non-con game, especially when Northwestern has a really challenging non-con game coming up against Duke. Yeah, the ACC Big Ten Challenge. They'll be in Durham at Cameron Indoor on Thursday. It's a gauntlet of a matchup against the Dukies. They've been rising to ACC supremacy early on here in Welsh Ryan Arena, however. Valpo trying to cut into this lead. Here's a three from the corner. That's off the mark from Sims. Same kind of struggles plaguing Valpo. They're finding some of those looks along the perimeter, but unfortunately these players are just not able to finish those three pointers today. Rainey finding Wood. The cross court pass to Walsh. Now Brown. That won't fall. Mott trying to grab the rebound, but it'll come up with the beacons. Dunson thought about the three and said it will be Pitts. Again, just unlucky for the beacons. And those quick release shots, taking them very early on of the shot clock. Here's Rainey. Trying to penetrate inside. A double dribble called on Kayla Rainey. So I would like, per game, excuse me, 3.2 per game. So I would like to see kind of her not decide to drive to the basket, but maybe kick it out. I think Jillian Brown was open there. Now Saunders, who came off the bench, she'll drive inside. The easy score won't fall. Natalie Saunders has had herself a mum afternoon. Wood driving inside. Count it and the foul. Sydney Wood driving to the basket, drawing the foul. For her to kind of step up and get aggressive, put the ball in the basket and end up at the charity stripe is huge for the Northwestern offense. And Wood completes the old fashioned three point play. 48 22 Northwestern. And this is how Valparaiso fell behind early. It was. Fouling a score in the early minutes. Brown finds Saunders. Saunders has Walsh, but she'll kick it out. And it's a three-pointer from Leah Ernest. Those threes are going to be crucial. Mott cleans up the work. Inside, the nice feed. Walsh draws the foul. And Kaylee Walsh, I'll never see her without a smile as she will shoot a pair trying to hit the 50 point mark as the first end of two rattles out. And you mentioned four Northwestern the marquee matchup at Duke, then they begin Big Ten play with an early stint in Ann Arbor against Michigan. Host DePaul back here on December 10th, and we'll visit UIC and host Air Force on December 17th. Valpo now with the second chance. Pitts had her pass deflected. It will stay here with the Beacons. Saunders. Now here's a three. Rattles home.
Four pits and back-to-back three-pointers for Valparaiso, seven of 20. In this ball game, Kaylee Walsh will try her luck. Won't fall, Brown collects the rebound. Now Mott, inside, pass to Brown, won't fall. Valpo comes up with the ball. Dunson, here's another three. That one off the mark. Rainey collects the board. She's driving in transition. Jump ball. Jump ball will keep it with the Wildcats with 24 on the shot clock. You see there again, Kayla Rainey trying to drive in, but the, just outmatched size-wise by those Valpo defenders. The three from Wood won't fall. Here comes Saunders in the Beacons. Hits. Now Ernest. That will go. Leah Ernest. And that's how Valpo is going to be able to crawl their way back into this game. An 18 point deficit still staring at them in the mirror. However, taking advantage of that perimeter defense or lack thereof, the turnover. Northwestern calls timeout. First call Northwestern timeout. will call a timeout. Some key threes from Leah Ernest and number four Pitts. Yeah, Leah Ernest, three, four, three from three on the afternoon. So she has been just perfect beyond the arc for the Beacons. And Northwestern trying to build on their 18 point lead. They'll have 10 to work with. Here's Rainey trying to drive inside. Off the glass won't fall. Oh, a nice steal there from Wood. The score won't go. Jillian Brown trying to go for the in transition layup. Great effort there, though, from Sydney Wood on the defensive end. She's averaging 2.4 steals a game two seasons ago. She was averaging 2.6, was second on the team in that stat behind, of course, the backcourt burglar, Veronica Burton. And so that's what Sydney Wood does best. She forces those steals, gets them, and pushes the pace. And Jillian Brown doesn't end up with the basket, but the trip to the line. He's one on one at the charity stripe. It'll be Valparaiso ball. Here's Johnson at the top of the key. Finds Interante. Now Saunders. Off the fingertips of Johnston. And yet another turnover here off Jada Johnston. It's Walsh to inbound to Rainey. That's Valpo's third turnover in the last about minute 15. So again, those continuing to make them struggle offensively. And a little quick play there from Kaylee Walsh. Three of, the, three of the four field goals also coming from deep. So yeah, she leads Valpo in scoring it. 11 points. Now here's a quick steal. That one will go from Hartman. Right off the inbound. Number 33 in white gets it done. Making an immediate impact off the bench. Leah Hartman, talk about a statement. Here's Pitts. Play broken up. Jump ball. Wood in a lot of heavy traffic there. It will stay with the Wildcats. Yeah, they're just going to try to avoid her defense because it can be quite good, as you saw there, coming up with the steals. Back to the Beacons, back to back jump balls. You don't see that quite often. They're getting possession back to her team. Valpo with five turnovers in the last 210, a scoring drought in that last 210, really going to try and fight for the ball anyway and get possession back as they try to cut into this hefty Wildcat lead. Deacons will have 22 to work with. 
<laughs> I mean, yeah, <laughs> Sam, you just looked at me and pointed and honestly speechless. There Sydney Wood goes again. She has just been all over the floor. And, you know, obviously Valpo trying to target her right off those steals. There's been a couple times where she's fallen to the floor and no one's really been there to support her. But, you know, Northwestern coming up again, and that's steal number three for Sydney Wood. Here's Wood with the basketball being guarded by Saunders. She'll kick it out to Lau. Lau inside. The shovel-like pass to Walsh off the mark. Don't think Walsh was quite framed up as much as she would have liked to have been there, and that one was just a bit off target again. Here's Saunders. Now Ernest. Now to Johnson, back to Saunders. 11 to work with. Too easy for Ali Saunders. Saunders' first field goal since the triple that she hit, but again, just five points, and Northwestern doing a really good job making sure that she doesn't have another 30-plus performance. Oh, and a feed in from Walsh. Gets it to go. Jillian Brown, a nice feed. Saunders loses her dribble. Now inside, here's Johnston, being guarded by Walsh. Johnston elevates for the score. Now Lau, back to Wood. Wood trying to find some space. Unable to find it, Walsh with the board, but unable to have the putback. Now Valparaiso in transition. Oh wait, whistle. Because, you know, once you've gotten a year of NCAA basketball under your belt, you're kind of ready to clean things up and be a little more efficient, especially defensively. As Pitts hits the first of two. At least Pitts. Now with five. Hartman. Here's Brown, back to Hartman. That three off the mark, it won't fall. Pitts. A fight for possession. Van Wielden and Wood. Pitts finds Brown. And the whistle and a foul. Another one now, that one going to be on Leia Hartman. You can see head Sorry. coach Mary Evans talking to the rest of her squad as Interante shoots these free throws. And you have to think they're kind of trying to find something to change it up and surprise this Northwestern defense. Obviously a bit better recently, but still a long ways to go. As Interante makes the back end of two. Wildcats up by 16 late in the third quarter. Hartman now to Walsh, back to McWilliams. McWilliams driving inside, the kick out. Hartman, that three off the front end. There's Pitt. The Beacons get another shot. Tip by Lau, here comes number two in white. Lau, it's gonna stay on this end. Great hustle. Lau trying to find an open player. Back to Lau. That shot partially blocked. It will come back with the Beacons. Johnston. Now Brown. Van Wielden called for a travel. Another turnover. Yeah, I mean, Northwestern right now, all of their last six, the scoring drought of just over two minutes, and Valpo not able to make anything happen off of that. They just notched their 22nd turnover, and they're just kind of shooting themselves in the foot right now. Lau draws the foul. That's going to go on Ava Interante for both teams. 
Williams inside, finds Wood. And the roll will go for Sydney Wood. Now 11 points, three Northwestern players in double figures. Having Sydney Wood in double figures is especially important too for Northwestern. And that bucket was exactly what the Wildcats needed coming into the final minute of the third quarter. Like potentially could happen. And I think to try and get to that 70 mark would be ideal for this Northwestern offense. Again, really tall task ahead next week. So a seven second difference between game clock and shot clock. Here is Van Wielden. Off the pits, finds Brown. Brown going inside, that won't go. Johnston hitting the deck. Brown running the baseline. That shot off the mark. Lau won't get it off in time. And Northwestern will head into the fourth quarter. Floor, up but like you said, 18 points leads all scorers. She has been such an impactful player. So fourth quarter action getting underway here in Evanston. McWilliams driving. The off balance shot won't go. A fight for possession. Yet another jump ball to kick things off here in the fourth quarter. I was just going to say, there have been quite a few <laughs> jump balls today. I think that just speaks to how scrappy both these teams are playing. And going back to Walsh, only a sophomore, you wouldn't think, just looking at her, if you were someone from outside the program, that she has only two years, not even two years, under her belt in the Big Ten. The improvements, too, that she's made from last year are just so vast. I'll be interested to see how it kind of translates into, into conference play, as that's going to be much more tough. But um, like you said, yeah, she is playing with so much maturity this season, which is exactly the change she needed to make coming off of her first year. And Lau collects the Van Wielden miss. with Anna Morris. The foul, I believe, is going to go on Johnston. Falpo needs these buckets here. I mean, they've got 39 right now, haven't quite reached the 40 point mark, could right here, and they do, but on the season, 72.8 points per game for Valparaiso, and today, Northwestern holding them to just 40 with seven minutes to go in the game. So they're just not producing offensively like they normally can. And yes, it is a Big Ten opponent, but I think unfortunately for the Beacon, some of their highest scorers have not been uh, you know, hitting their targets like they would like to. And Valpo's next as we see Wood drive inside once again. Valpo's next opponents, Bowling Green on the second, Western Michigan on the seventh at Western Illinois December. Fool you. So some winnable games, but also some ch some challenging games. As we see Johnston here at the Charity Stripe. Northwestern, on the other hand, I think has two really challenging non-con games less left. That's Duke on Thursday, and then DePaul. DePaul just got a huge win over a very talented Big Ten team in Maryland, and DePaul gave Northwestern a run for their money last year. Ended up, it was such a close game. Ended up winning by I think just one or two. But DePaul, a very impressive program, and so this is a really essential win for Northwestern here. You know, playing like this, getting some confidence going into that tougher schedule. Here's Wood with a three. Count it, Sydney Wood, an absolute beauty on the court today. 19 points for number three. Jillian Brown comes up with the scrappy rebound and Wood will calm things down. But yes, DePaul, since before UConn rejoined the Big East, DePaul was the class of the Big East. The Blue Demons know how to get it done. It's a little Chicagoland showdown, if you will. <laughs> oh, another three from Jillian Brown. She's now four for nine from three-point land. And Valparaiso's going to call a timeout. I'd be surprised if Joe McEwen starts throwing in some of the bench players in as, you know, Northwestern holds this comfortable lead, and there's only about five minutes to go. And talk about the efficiency. Over 36 seconds, that run. Brown coming up with the steal. Jillian Brown in transition. Was looking 
for Haley Weaver, unable to find it. Turnover there, that was the 13th steal from Northwestern this afternoon. Really scrappy on defense getting those steals. It's been huge, it's been such a difference maker and you know, unfortunately Valpo, not only with the steals, there's another one, <laughs> but just turnovers in general, no matter how they're coming by. Ooh, Weaver, she draws some contact. Board. She sinks the first then, now 30 point lead for the Wildcats. Northwestern in the bonus. Her first free throws this season, and she makes them count. 31 point lead for Northwestern. Off the foul from Saunders, who now has the ball dribbling her team up. Ernest, trying to dri dribble inside. The reversal goes. Leah Ernest, now with 13 to lead the Beacons. Here's Brown. Brown trying to go inside. Jillian Brown delivers. And Jillian Brown has been amazing. 17 points. Her, Walsh, and Wood have been absolutely spectacular. This year, you know, was a bit cold to start off. Wasn't really draining threes the way that she knows she can. But today, she has just really come out of her shell and is starting to get back to some of that late Big Ten season prowess. And we see a slew of substitutions coming in for the Wildcats. The cross-court pass. Weaver from the corner. Oh, she drills it. Haley Weaver. She has been making her presence known here on the court as Brown is unable to pick up the slack. It will be Valpo Ball, Tekka with the hustle play. Northwestern was 76 right now. That is better than their season average of 67.6. I said that they'd want to get to that 70 mark and they have. 80 would be great too, 90, who knows? <laughs> <laughs> Keep going up as Saunders the frustration continuing for number 11 in Brown. Her intended target in Johnston. Now inside, the foul being called a Demisayo. Can't connect on the front end. So, like I said earlier, mostly bench players on the floor now. Still have Kayla Rainey. But, you know, you got Mercy Adam Masayo, Alana Goodchild, Haley Weaver, Mel Daly. So a big young squad getting some final minutes here. The three won't fall. Northwestern called for the foul. Inbound will come from Pitts. And it's stolen away. Here comes Northwestern in transition. The pull up won't fall. And some sloppy defense there from the Beacons. Keeps it with Northwestern. Dealing with some injuries, but hoping to see her get back and get some more minutes before Big Ten play. Here's Weaver. Lau, penetrating inside. The pass won't fall. Demisayo turns it over. Here come the Beacons. Pitts with Sims. Now back to Pitts. Pitts driving inside. Sims with the fake. Picked off by Weaver. Here comes Lau. Lau, the little shake and bake. She has been so quick today, pushing in transition for Valpo to get on offense and then getting back on defense. She's been great too, and there she gets the ball back for her team. Yes. And on the counter, six turnovers, however, for Valpo. Looking to change that, unable to. As Weaver hits the deck. See if she can do it here. Nothing but nets for number 11. And you mentioned the 
the substitutes coming in off the bench and this just shows you what Northwestern women's basketball is going to look like in the future and it's a it's a pleasant surprise as the offensive fluidity has seemingly been able to show up here in the later portions of this game. Yeah, it really has not, you know, trickled off at all since it's been these guys on the court and it's all first years and sophomores right now for the Wildcats. Ernest trying to drive inside. Here's Johnston off the mark. Caroline Lau, she's had herself a productive day. Daly driving inside. The shake and bake goes. What a great play. You know, a bit quieter, not as much of a, you know, such a force on the court, but she's kind of sneaky with those moments that really come off and have big payoff for the Wildcats. Daly connects on the three point play. A 17 2 run over the last four minutes and some change. Here's Sims inside. Johnston, now Pitts. Here in the corner is Ernest. The three won't fall. Nice hustle there from Jada Johnston. Johnston. All rim, but no nets. Lau runs things up for the Wildcats. Weaver, the cross-court pass. Daly thought about the three. We'll give it to Goodchild, now back to Lau. Eight on the shot clock. Looking ahead into the future, offer some size for Coach McEwen's club especially underneath the basket. She'll have to work on the free throw shooting, <laughs> but uh, when she comes in, the bench gets so excited to watch her play. And I would say what's most exciting about her is just her blocking ability, and that does come from her size. She'll, she's had some epic blocks in just her couple uh, years with Northwestern. Olivia Sims, the in-transition baskets. Connects on the three-point play. With 102 left to play here from Welsh Ryan Arena. And down the stretch, Valpo one of nine from the floor compared to Northwestern six of seven. Really tough, and with Leah Ernest uh, leading the squad, she's got 13 points, but no one else in double digits. And it's really hurt the team. And Lau called for the offensive foul. Ernest to a perfect three from three from the arc, but you know, we mentioned that stat a long time ago, and so she hasn't really had any more opportunities to shoot from deep today, and I think that's another thing that's kind of caused this Valpo offense to stagnate. Here's Ernest with the ball. Elise Pitts. The reach in will send her to the free throw line. The last play for Northwestern this afternoon. Pitts unable to connect on the front end. You can see the frustration from Elise Pitts here. I think missing that free throw just not the way she wants to cap off what's already been a frustrating game, frustrating game for Valparaiso. And Pitts connects on the back end. And Caroline Lau and Northwestern will dribble away the time in what has been an exhilarating performance for the Wildcats ahead of a gauntlet time and schedule. And the time expires on this one as Northwestern comes away with a gigantic 81 to 47 victory.